everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus Channel. Fighter jets and bombers are no good to anyone on the ground. In fact, they are little more than targets waiting to be destroyed by enemy aircraft. For this reason, Air Forces worldwide have always focused on getting their planes mobilized and ready to fight as quickly as possible. This process is known as scrambling. And it's so integral to combat readiness that units will often compete against one another to see who can get their planes up in the air the fastest. The F-15 Eagle and F-16 Fighting Falcon were both introduced during the height of the Cold War. During this time, the U.S. Air Force and its NATO allies had crews stationed all over the world with the hopes of being able to address any threat, anywhere, in mere minutes. That's why these aircraft are built smaller, lighter, and with improved thrust-to-weight ratio. Of course, having the aircraft itself ready to go is just one small part of the process. To meet the five-minute goal, pilots and ground crews will be assigned to alert readiness. This means that they should expect to be called to their aircraft at any time of the day or night. Such calls are often drills designed to ensure maximum readiness, but these only serve to prepare them for the real thing further. Ground crews must maintain a similar level of alertness 24 hours a day. This means keeping the aircraft fueled, armed, and ready to take off in as little time as possible. The moment the scramble call is announced, these men and women spring into action, getting the plane prepared for the pilot, who is most likely already on their way. Once the wheel blocks are removed, the plane can taxi out onto the runway, receiving information from the tower the entire time. There is no time for a crew briefing before a scramble, so pilots will typically be informed of what sort of threat they face minutes before encountering it. Here, you can see United States and Jordanian Air Force pilots accompanied by crews from Japan. They are participating in a scramble competition known as Exercise Eager Tiger. The goal is to strengthen the partnership between these allied countries and provide an opportunity for pilots to practice their combat readiness. Such international operations require a lot of coordination between individuals who don't necessarily share the same primary language, adding an extra level of difficulty to the exercise.
Pilots and ground crews are asked to race to their aircraft, just as they would during a real scrambling scenario. In this case, the F-16 Fighting Falcons are fired up and directed towards the runway for takeoff. These exercises are timed, with each team competing to see who can get to their mark in the shortest amount of time. Though aerial warfare has changed quite a bit since the Cold War era, newer aircraft are by no means spared from having to scramble. Here, you can see pilots from the Italian Air Force 32nd Wing performing a scrambling exercise in Iceland. In this case, they're flying F-35 Lightning multi-role fighter jets, considered among the most advanced planes in existence. A warning siren alerts them that they need to get to their aircraft. After donning their flight suits, they jump into transport vans where they can don their flight helmets. These are integral to interfacing with the F-35 systems. The ground crews have already prepped the F-35s. So the pilots need only close the canopy, taxi into position, and take off. The U.S. Air Force is particularly fond of using competitions. They do so to enhance crew and pilot combat readiness. This extends beyond scrambling exercises into weapons load competitions, like the one seen here. These men and women are from the 61st Aircraft Maintenance Squadron at Luke Air Force Base in Arizona and compete to see who can load munitions onto their F-35s the fastest. The F-35 is a stealth fighter with internal weapon stations to help minimize its radar signature. It also has six external weapon stations with a capacity of 5,700 pounds. Due to the size and weight of the missiles and bombs, the crew members need to use a variety of lifts and dollies to load them into place. This adds an additional level of difficulty to an already challenging competition. As a multi-role combat aircraft, the F-35 uses its various weapons in a lot of different ways. One such example is what's known as a strafing run. One of the oldest methods of air-to-ground attack, strafing runs feature a plane flying at high speeds and using its guns to engage ground targets. In the case of the F-35, the gun being used is a 25 mm GAU-22 four-barrel rotary cannon. This high-speed weapon can fire up to 3,300 rounds per minute with a shocking amount of accuracy. Since the Vietnam War, 
The primary method through which aircraft engage their targets have been missiles, like the AIM-9 Sidewinder, an infrared weapon that owns onto its target's heat signature. Missiles like this are ideal for air-to-air -air combat, as jet engines serve as an excellent target for heat-seeking missiles like this. Indeed, the Sidewinder is the most heavily used missile in the history of air combat and has helped eradicate a number of enemies both on the ground and in the air. Here, you can see members of the 52nd Aircraft Maintenance Squadron competing in the fourth quarter load crew competition. This happens at an airbase in Spangdalem, Germany. This time, their subject is an F-16 Fighting Falcon. Each load team earns points for their performance during the weapons load process. But the judges look at more than just speed. These men and women need to be highly proficient and communicate effectively in order to earn the highest marks. This means minimizing mistakes and maximizing efficiency at every step in the process. F-16s boast a total of nine hardpoints upon which various types of missiles, guided bombs, and external fuel tanks can be placed. This process can be extremely complex and time-consuming depending on the provided load configuration. When it comes to command and control exercises, Global Thunder is the equivalent of the Olympics. This annual large-scale training exercise is specifically focused on nuclear readiness, but involves multiple countries performing mock missions related to electronic warfare, missile defenses, and strategic deterrence, among others. The goal is to create realistic training simulations like bomber flights and nuclear attacks, giving thousands of personnel a chance to participate. During Global Thunder, munitions crews get the opportunity to assemble, transport, and load bombs and missiles of all types and sizes. These operations take a lot of knowledge, skill, and teamwork to pull off, so every opportunity to practice is extremely valuable to the crews. Here, you can see airmen from the 134th Air Refueling Wing participating in yet another exercise focused on readiness. These men and women must leave their barracks, get into several vehicles, and race to the airbase as quickly as possible. As with any other readiness exercise, every second counts here. When each team arrives at their aircraft, they immediately begin prepping it, both inside and out. These larger planes can take longer to airborne than smaller aircraft, making it even more important for the crews to arrive and begin the pre-flight process as soon as possible.
As hectic as they are, training exercises like these are invaluable tools for any military organization. In most cases, they are the closest thing to real combat and the best indicator of how a particular team or crew will perform. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.